Yeah, Nina, it sounds awesome. Um, I love the low end. I love the way the the kick and bass interact, like we were talking about. And uh, Thanks, vocal sounds yeah. great, nice and saturated. Tell us a bit about that production, Thanks. like I guess, or, or the mix rather. What went into that? Yeah, so Jordan Mitchell, one of my favorite favorite people to work with. He's a super talented artist, songwriter, producer, and actually also recording engineer uh, from uh, from LA. So he made this song basically all by himself. I think he might have gotten a session music, mu- musician to help him out with some of the guitars, but he plays guitar himself as well. Did the whole production, wrote the whole song, recorded himself. And so it's super fun for me to work with him because uh, I work in Pro Tools, which is not popular out here in the Netherlands, but in the U.S. is actually like the main program that people work with, right? So mm. he sends me his Pro Tools session exactly where he left off which is ideal for me because then I can actually, because the demo already sounds great. Uh, it's just a matter of like getting everything to, to pop right and get in, everything in their place. And so I can just work uh, on his song where he left off. And uh, that's really great for me because I can go into his processing. I can add some of my own. I can take some of it away, maybe if it's not working. Um, and just really subtly kind of like bring it out to where I feel like it uh, you know there's life in it Um, and so it's really really great to work on his stuff Um, also because there's a lot of organic instrumentation in there like uh, the guitars Mm -hmm. are all real instruments and so um, yeah and the, the vocals sound really great he records through an Avalon and I think it's an a Neumann U87 if I'm not mistaken Mm -hmm. And uh, it's actually funny. He uses his car as a vocal booth. <laughs> so really, <laughs> it's really fun. If you check out his Instagram, you will see like some posts that he has on there. He just literally sits in his car, and he has like the 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 mic mounted to the back of the passenger seat. Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> just record. That's hilarious. It's like the the greatest vocal booth, right? Yeah, cars so. pro- cars sound great, right? They're nice and tight, and and you know, there's tons yeah. of fabric, right? <laughs> Right. <laughs> yeah, it's really, really awesome. And the glass isn't like you know, you know, just like a wa- like a wall, right? It's t- it's 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 at least bent. It's it's tilted, right, so, exactly. Yeah, tilted and bent. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Great diffusion there. Yeah. Interesting. Wow. Yeah. And, and that sounds dope. Yeah, and he's just really, really awesome to work with, also because we have this understanding of like, I guess we both have the same taste, and so it's it's easy in a sense of like. Oh, I know what to do here, and then we just kind of like, um, yeah, work on it together. And you just carry the torch on, like he passes the baton, yeah. and you go for it. You know, right? And it's actually funny because he never ends up really master getting my my mixes mastered. He's just always just kind of like, yeah, that's it, that's the one. Really, <laughs> just like done. <laughs> yeah. So uh, it's usually kind of like the unmastered version that gets released, which I actually think is a lot of fun because there's. There's something to it that makes it just a little bit not perfect mm. um, and not polished that I actually think works really well for his sound in particular. So that's, uh, yeah, it's really, really cool and really awesome to to work with. Yeah, him. that's amazing. I like I, I see I feel like we're, mm. we're, we're, we're trending back or we're circling back to this like lack of perfection thing. Which you you, you keep talk yeah. you keep talking about of like that's really what what where the ju- you know the sauce is 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 in that lack yeah. of perfection and and it's 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 I think so I think there's there's truth in that and I think um, for me like I I think like you know like the, you talk about Steely Dan Steely Dan is like you know mm-hmm. that's like the, those are like the perfect records and it's like when you're getting started in yeah. production like that's kind of your goal is to make those perfect records mm-hmm. and then as you kind of get to the point where like you can make things perfect you realize it's sterile and then you go back and and then you mess then you fuck everything up yeah 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 absolutely it's actually i think jason joshua said this he was like just fuck shit up to make it beautiful and it's so true it's just like you have to make something not perfect and then that actually makes it really really nice yeah and i think it's it's hard you know I, i i know i know personally i'm still i still struggle with um, making things less perfect, you know what I mean? Because 
you can hear the imperfections, and so you want to fix them. That's your that's your yeah the nature of uh, of the audio engineer. Yeah. But, but sometimes that's where your taste comes in, also, right? right? Yeah, because if you if you just really focus too much on I don't know things that are poking out or things are just like oh maybe I should fix this or fix that like if you're only fixing and nothing else then I think that's where the problem is so if you're really just also letting your ears and your heart guide you through like what should happen in the song and then also kind of like fix what's not working that's kind of like a better balance I think at least that works well for me because if I just focus only on what I should fix then that's what I end up doing is just fixing things and I'm not actually bringing out anything in the song I'm just only taking away what's not working right so finding finding that balance works well for me yeah you have to like I guess you have to really get into like an emotional state of of listening of of yeah get the feel in there yeah. 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 That's awesome. Absolutely. So, so back yeah. to Arizona. Um uh, tell me about what you did with those guitars cuz they had this nice like kind of like compressed kind of I'm not sure if they were electric or acoustic even. I think it was both. Um I had a electric and acoustic uh tracks in there. So um just to get like and I've said this earlier already in this conversation but just to bring out that strumming I use a slow attack and then a medium long release because these are like kind of like long strums Mm. so it's not like a really fast rhythm right so it's just kind of like a laid back rhythm with like long long notes so i want to bring out the strumming i want to bring out the the finger part of those uh guitars so i really want to make sure that the attack is slow so that i the the compressor lets those through before it starts compressing right so so that's a way for me to like keep the life in there. And then the medium long release is really just to kind of like bring out the tail. And I like to use uh, a kind of low ratio, like between one and a half to two, so that I can really like squeeze them a little bit. Mm. Because if you use a higher ratio on your compressor, then that really just kind of like makes it a brick wall, I right. guess, it's makes like, it like a brick. It's an instant choke if you pull the threshold ha- down too much. Right, and I like to pull the threshold down so much that there is an actual squeeze happening. But if I keep the ratio low, like between one and a half to two, usually be- around like 1.6, something like that, mm-hmm. um, I can really squeeze down with the with the threshold and um, push up the makeup gain. And that really works well with the attack and release settings. And usually I'll be doing this on the Renaissance compressor Mm -hmm. from Waves. Yeah. One of my favorites. It's a a classic. Yeah, it's a classic. And it works well on so many things, right? And just I know exactly where I want this these settings to be. So this is usually well where I'll be. And then for um, in terms of like the electric and acoustic together, the acoustic will have a little bit more high end than the electric because if they both have high end then that's going to be pretty harsh so the electric guitar is usually a little bit easier to filter down yeah you know take out a little bit more of the high end and just really uh, keep that mid-range and make sure that the low mids are a little bit out of each other's way and the low end in the acoustic guitar can be a little bit problematic when the bass hits so either i'll automate that or i'll use a track spacer or something like that that we mentioned earlier, something like that before. Gotta check out this track spacer. Seems like a, a really worthy yeah. purchase. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm just plug in. Yeah. <laughs> plug in plugins. You're plugging plugins. Over here. Love it. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's just some stuff that I use every single mix that I just can't really live without anymore. So Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. I totally get that. Yeah, Saturn is going to be on. Uh, I'm going to move it up from like Black Friday to to the the nearer future. I think after <laughs> after schmoozing with you. So, I think they're they're a Dutch company yeah. also, right? They're from the Netherlands. They are. Yeah, yeah. And you didn't hear this from me, but if you can get a student discount in some way, that might be helpful. All right. And just. A little pro tip. Pro tip. <laughs> Not that I don't want them to, you know, earn the money that they so well deserve, but like it's not it's not in everyone's uh, possibility. Right. Uh, so pro tip for the pro Q to, and the pro pay. L. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> and the Saturn and the pro MB and the pro DS. <laughs> get the whole package. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, get the whole bundle. Yeah. That 
It's a great de-esser <laughs> also. It's it's like my second favorite de-esser right now. Total tangent, but I love the... the I, What's your favorite? Right now, I'm like into the Isotope RX de-esser. <laughs> it's so good. Really? It just has like a plug-in. I just pop it on the track. It's so good. It's wow, transparent. I haven't tried that yet. Yeah. De-essers are funny because I, I find like, like uh, they don't always do exactly what you want or everything you want. And sometimes you got to use a couple yeah. or three. Yeah. I like to, I like to, well, first of all, manually just clip gain mm-hmm. down the S's by hand. That actually works the best for me. And then I can pop on a DSer that does like maybe two dB of gain reduction and not more. Mm-hmm. And then if I need one later on in the chain, I'll just add another one. So I'd rather do that than make one work really hard because, you know. Right. That's, yeah. It doesn't sound natural. Yeah, usually there's like one S that doesn't work and all the other ones will work. And usually it's the first S yeah. S in the song. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you just set it to that one, but, you know, actually it doesn't need to work so hard for the rest of the song. So right. you could have just clip gained it down. <laughs> yes. Yeah, maybe. There's no there's no shortcuts. Yeah. So we all, well, we're trying to do shortcuts to, to save us or we're trying to like get automation there work done for no. us. but. No shortcuts. No shortcuts. You have to do the work. You have yeah. to do the work. I always say this, like, in the sense of, like, you need to eat your veggies. Like, you right. have to eat your veggies. Like, you would say to a kid, like, there's just no other way. Right. You, you can sustain know, yourself you on donuts to. for a year or two, but eventually, <laughs> eventually. It's not all donuts in life. You know? Yeah, that's absolutely true. I like that. That's a great analogy. I'm going to think about that next time I have to go manually, you know. EQ uh, like one moment in a in a, yeah, in a in a vocal. It's good for you. It's good for your health Absolutely. to to manually <laughs> manually do things. <laughs> Edit your yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Edit your vocals. Amazing. <laughs> um, I want to ask you a couple more generalized questions before we wrap the interview, which is obviously this has been great. So many takeaways for me, uh, and I'm so I'm sure for the audience also. Um, uh, just uh, creative energies, you know, like. I mean, maybe you already hinted at it with like vegetables and exercise, but, um, <laughs> you know, we all have days where we're super pumped to get into the studio and, and do our work. And we're, there's days yeah. where we're not as, as hyped. How do you stay energized and being in a good, you know, creative mindset yeah. to, to do your work? So taking care of your health physically and mentally is is huge. That's just the number one thing that actually gets most of the time gets really, really uh, neglected by engineers, by studio people, you know. Yeah. Um, a lot of the time there's like zero to no daylight. There's like just an unimaginable amount of hours that you work uh, at, at, at a time. Uh, there's fast food. There's not a lot of water and not a lot of exercise, um, you know. So and I've done quite a bit of that type of lifestyle you know especially coming up when I would work through the night and then I'd go to bed at like 7 a.m and I was not taking care of my health and I just I noticed that I got first of all I didn't have any energy um I was getting depressed I wasn't really like in a great space in life and so um over the years I've kind of like turned that around and also with the help of like listening to podcasts about health Um, just general things like exercise and diet and just like really informing myself on this stuff and uh, the circadian rhythm, like just your natural circadian rhythm of like day and night and when your body gets tired, when your body is energized. And uh, so if you can at least do what you can in order to get enough exercise every day like even if it's just half an hour that's huge if you can get that for yourself get fresh air get daylight get yeah you know <laughs> uh, drink water um not just like energy drinks not just coffee actual water you know and yeah. um eat healthy and exercise is, is huge so if you can get that down to like a daily rhythm for yourself then all the rest is just going to be so much easier to, and you're going to have so much more stamina and so much more energy to actually do this like full time at a pace that is, you know, really high for most of us. Yeah. That um, is usually just not 
sustainable for a long time if you don't take care of the machine yeah, that's yeah. doing this work. Yeah, this is a good uh, this is a good uh, good word of encouragement for for the for me. <laughs> <laughs> it's been uh, <laughs> since Omicron started. I have not been to the gym, and uh, it's time to get back on the horse now that we're we're post COVID. Actually, same. Yeah, same for me. Like the uh, because I. 